I, I feel like there's a there's an aspect of with first through third of being over and against something else, right? As part of identity, and with with fourth, there is a there is an aspect of with, and that idea that it that it's with, but it's a different with than the second chakra was, right? Right. And and I wouldn't say that first through third are inherently over and against that like that, but there is something in the development of those that is. Uh, identity establishing through being opposed to something or separate from something. Yeah. Yeah, well put. So fourth, physically located, I mean, it's called like the heart chakra, right? Or yeah. The, but I really do, like, <laughs> the reason I brought it, like, I, it, it's uh, it's often a, a traumatic experience that opens it up. I mean, I don't even like the phrase opens it up, but mm-hmm. um, that book you gave me a long time ago that, I lent to someone and never got back. Uh, Healing the split talks about the shift from third to fourth as a potential like cause of psychosis, and the the love that it gets associated with it is uh, it burns. I had to buy a new copy, by the way. So <laughs> did I give yours away? I thought I bought. No, I probably did. I had yours. I gave it to uh, to Ken, and Ken never gave it back. So I'm sorry that I lost your book. <laughs> I owe you a book. I shouldn't have brought that story up. I forgot that have. it was your book to begin with. I feel my heart chakra closing as we speak. <laughs> as a, uh, how about as a little, uh, I don't know, treat for the listener. You up for for me? I'll I'll do my best to shift into four chakra consciousness, you know, to whatever degree I can at the moment. Even though you lost my book, and <laughs> and then see if you notice it. Is that you want to try that? Uh, yeah, that yeah, sounds good. Okay, so if I was going to describe the shift I feel when I do that, I, I, the the vibratory frequency that seems to be the medium that I'm most aware of at the moment is is more of what I would call a four chakra medium, a, a release in tension. There's a sense of a, like you were saying, a less of a over and against, and more of a with. It's not instead of the others, but but it it seems to be more true or more real, and feels like melting butter. <laughs> I was trying to figure out how to make it less cheesy, and you just went the <laughs> other direction. Yeah, so I shouldn't judge people so harshly who talk about it opening and love. You know, there's there's definitely that too. So that's I don't mean to. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, to integrate that, I think just some of my own experiences make me uh, angry. I, I hulk out thinking that if that's like the only experience someone ever had of it, I'm like, well, f you. I don't, I don't <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely there. And it's important to note that you know the Hulk was ultimately a good guy. Yeah, right. Not just David Banner, but the Hulk himself. You know, always. Just speed up the bad guys. Yeah, just don't shoot at them. Yeah, right. I think the I think the Hulk had a big open heart. <laughs> he was just pissed. And, and you know, and I mean, obviously we're, we're joking around, but it's true, right? Like your heart chakra, you can be very much at a four chakra orientation. Your heart can be very open, and you can be madder than hell. <laughs> it's not an either or. Right. And so, of course, the question arises, like, if we're both kind of saying this feels better, right? There's something that feels better about it. Who doesn't like melted butter? (laughs) And (laughs) everything tastes better with some melted butter on it. That's right. (laughs) 
Oh man, this is getting so bad. Um, I mean, we could edit some of it out, but I, I really do. <laughs> I really do like the the tension release you're talking about. Like, yeah. there's just there's a solid to liquid aspect to it. Right. There's a. I'll put that in. It's pretty good. It's fun. It's funny because it's it's like I feel more happy. I feel a little more giddy. You know. Right. And it's like, why not stay here? Right. Right. If we're trying to do uh, surgery right now, we should probably not be manically uh, laughing. But, you know, but in general, there's a tendency of as as far as like, well, why do we come out of this? It's typically because you could you could say, well, the lower three pull you back down. Hmm. Concerns on the lower three pull you back down like like a gravitational pull based on unresolved stuff you have there. An example Ken Wilber uses in one of his books, I forget which one, he's talking about making a, making a shift up to the next level of consciousness. And he says it's like if you, if you start with 100 units, if it takes 50 units to make to the next level, and so you jump to the next level, but, but you leave 10 units behind, meaning unresolved traumas and issues and fixations and identifications and stuff. But now you still have 90 units, and so now you can make the jump to the next level, but this time you leave, you know, 30 units behind. It's like, well, now you've left a total of 40 units behind. You've still got 60 units, so now you jump from level 2 up to level 3, but now you left 20 units behind at level 3, right? So now you've got, what, 40 units left, right? So now you're sitting on on that level with with 40 units and it's like well you you know he was making the point like you're going to have a hard time going up to the next level unless you go back and reclaim some of those from below. That tends to be true for me. I notice that, you know, in myself and in clients where it's like why can't I stay up at the heart level? And it's like well I'll I'll literally in, intentionally be at heart level and then just you know, just watch and notice and I'll start to feel Mm. my first chakra or my second chakra or my third chakra start to sort of protest, you know? (laughs) (laughs) And it's like, damn. Yeah. And it's like the, the experience alone isn't going to, uh, to change you as a person. There's another way to look at that. The states versus stages framing. Right. That experiencing the fourth chakra, experiencing that physical release, experiencing that kind of, uh, uh, you know, wrapped up in love feeling, there is part of you that's very real and very sure and confident that that's not the entire truth. And if you're not in touch with that as well, it will <laughs> it will make you more aware of it than that experience, given time. And that's not to be discouraging. I think like what you're saying is really good that it's, uh, it's almost, I mean, having that experience can give new awareness of those other chakras of those lower chakras and lower vibrations that may have been, uh, unconscious. So that's kind of like the, the shift in stage potential of these, these state experiences is that it's going to shed a lot of light or a lot of awareness on things that you weren't looking at. Because otherwise, you know, you just run around thinking you've still got 100 units. Exactly. Like you brought up, stages is important, that states are different than stages. People can can access a state at any level, but the stage means that you've, you've integrated that, that you've, that you've established a, an awareness on that level that is stable and and durable as opposed to briefly accessing the state right and the stages idea being that in that with states you can jump around but with stages there's sort of a the idea is where where is your center of gravity and that the center of gravity ideally shifts up through the levels so states and stages definitely a stage change to kind of shift into Oh, a state change to experience forth, but a stage change to shift into occupying it and kind of letting it shed light on the lower 
uh, chakras. Right. Uh, fifth chakra is, is it the throat? Is it in the throat? Yep. J- just one more quick comment about the heart thing. Okay. You know, this idea that, that there's, there's awakening to the non-dual or to essence or to consciousness, which is different than making your way up through the chakras, right? They're two different paths. And I really like Wilbur's little, uh, you know, one of his many little uh, idioms where he says there's waking up and there's growing up. And I definitely notice that, that that a person can experience essence, can experience non-duality, can experience a sense of consciousness. But but as we all know, or, or as most people know, it's like, but you can have a very immature or or pathological person that's quite awake. And of course that really confuses the people who don't understand that, that these are different, different processes. So absolutely. I think it's a, a super important point. And I like, I like that framing of it too. I think for me personally, a lot of growing up happened after waking up. Exactly. <laughs> And uh, out of necessity. I'd like to meet someone that grew up before they woke up. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because that would be a unique person. Grow- growing up continues forever after waking up. For myself, you know, same thing. I feel like there was a certain waking up that happened. And then there was, uh, you know, ever since then, this uh, more pressure to grow up than I felt prior to that. Mm. Just like you're saying, I mean, it, it it shines a light on all this stuff that you're forced to deal with. That conscious awareness is there and continues to disrupt it. Every time I I feel like my ego gets a nice firm foothold somewhere, (laughs) (laughs) I feel consciousness going to work on it. I've had brief moments of, of seeing the fourth dimension. I, I mean, I can do it at will to a teeny degree, but I've had a couple of experiences where it was like a thousand times that, and it was it was completely overwhelming, and it and it was almost like thank God I, I was only there for a, you know a brief time. Is that is that in line with fifth chakra energy, or kind of dis, uh, distinguish where you see the line between three D and four D being? See. Th- <laughs> And it's, I mean, there could be, I, I guess, just talk more about it. This is the first time we've talked about three-dimensional versus four-dimensional. Mm-hmm. So maybe just, because I, I, I want to get back to kind of describing it and what that was like, but just a little bit of context for uh, what distinction you're making by saying brief glimpses of the fourth dimension. It feels like you're hesitant to to try to give words to it because it's not, because it's going to be representational, but I think it's... Uh, I guess what, when you started talking about fifth chakra and higher frequencies or vibrations, you shifted to talking about fourth dimensional experience. Jean Gibser's book, um, The Ever Present Origin, more than any other book for me, helped explain this stuff. He talks about um, pre, pre-perspectival, perspectival, and a-perspectival. And it's awesome because he goes through and, and talks about different pieces of, of art that are representative of, of these different levels or that, you know, that, that are literally showing these different levels. And so, for example, he talks about in world history, it, until a certain point in time, there, there were no drawings that had converging lines to show depth. They were just drawings that, that were more like mural, two-dimensional representation. And w- we all know that, that on a two-dimensional plane, if you want to, to give the, this, you know, the, the illusion of depth, you, you draw converging lines, right? And it, and it gives that experience as though it's 3D. Um, it adds another dimension to the two-dimensional page when you when you when you use converging lines. And I'm curious right now, like if you just intend and if and I'll help 
if you just intend drop down to second chakra and just look at the physical environment around you through your second chakra lens. And I think what you'll notice is that, is that actually the depth, the, the, the Z axis disappears. It's like, you know, there's a Z axis, but visually it, it disappears. Yeah, definitely. If I, if I sit in it. And it's not like you couldn't still walk around the room in that, right? It's not like you'd be bumping into everything or <laughs> si- sidestepping your way everywhere. <laughs> right. I could sort it out. There's uh, other, other physical instincts going on. Right. But, but literally that lens, it's like, oh my God, you know, and, and when there's no Z axis, for example, you feel a bit less alone because there isn't the separation that the Z axis brings. Mm. But you also are less free, less autonomous. Because notice if you allow the Z axis and or if you go up into third and really allow that to be there, A, I bet you'll notice that you don't usually do it to that extent. Meaning if you look across the room, right, at an object and then be aware that there is whatever it is, 10 feet or, you know, something between you and that thing, you're separate from it. It's over there. You're over here. And it's like that thing you talked about at the grocery store, right? Yeah. It's like, oh my God. You know, that that the continuity that was there in the second chakra. Just like if you move from the water to the air, it's like, well, wait, now when I just kind of push a little water towards you, you know, that medium, it's not as constant, it's not as immediate, right? Like if we're both hanging on to the, you know, to the end of a rope, there's this direct thing where, where kind of right away, one of us tugs on the rope and you feel it. If we let go of that rope, it's like, well, wait, now we just see each other over there, but, but the line of contact isn't the same. So there's a separateness there. And again, that, you know, and this is what energetic cords are and stuff, right? Energetic cording that people do with each other, which is a whole nother topic, but you know, just, just to go into that third chakra perspective and look around the room and it's like, it's like, wait a minute, I'm, you know, I meaning, and then we usually just think of our body, but it's our emotional self and mental self too. It's like, oh my God, I'm alone. I'm even, I'm even separate from the objects in this room in a way that if you're down in first or second, you're not separate from them or you're less separate from them. Right. Right. But so I'm saying, okay, where, where does one default to? And of course it depends. And throughout the day, you'll, you'll jump into this or that one, but there tends to be a default that one goes into as far as the actual lens they're actually looking with. I think uh, what this reminds me of was like early on working with you, I, and it ties into fifth chakra, I was kind of uh, split off from my body in a way, in kind of a self-preservation way. Mm -hmm. Uh, And there was uh, an exercise we did where I shifted down into third. And just like you're saying, the 3D world became more present. So it's kind of something I still do to this day, just to, to to make sure I'm not, you know, locked off in my head. But like you're saying, there's there's a separateness to it, but there's also um, a grounding to it, and 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 obviously it's different for different people. Like you're saying, as far as what the the pattern is or what the tendency is, but the um that two D sheen, I'll call it to the world, or that two D pain to the world is uh it's uh. It's a relief to see it shift, and it's a threat to see it shift, depending yeah. on that context you're talking about. To operate from a chakra is different than to actualize and or realize that, that chakra. It's like I can go up into more of a seventh chakra, non-dual knowing, and sit and be in this uh, you know, very peaceful state, can, can hold space can can uh, tolerate intense energies I'm, I'm not good at being consciously present in my throat chakra 
it's just it's just part of my pattern i've i've had to do a lot of work and i and i still that's still the one that i most feel kind of locked out of and just like you were saying about you know you, you can you can intentionally drop down in uh it, it just it just kind of notice so if i say that i've been that my tendency is to be in more of a seventh and then and then just vocalizing from the from the throat chakra uh so even when i just start to it just there's all this stuff but what i'm doing at the moment is i'm i'm coming down into my throat chakra with my consciousness and you can probably hear that my voice is different yeah in general i think my voice probably sounds better it probably sounds softer or fuller or like there's more presence in my voice, <laughs> but I do not feel better. <laughs> right. I feel, uh, I feel like I just got, you know, I, I feel that trauma feeling. I feel my hands are suddenly, you know, my palms are kind of, you know, they're clammy and I feel a bit weak and shaky and I feel vulnerable. And I'm aware that I would benefit from just staying here. And I'm aware that you're being quite non-threatening to me right now in this, uh, as I'm being present more in this throat chakra uh, dimension. Um, but just feel that if I go back up into more of a seventh chakra orientation, which you could think, well, gee, that's higher. That must be better. Yeah, but now I'm not being as present in my throat chakra. And can you hear that? I'm very capable of talking and articulating, but I'm no longer as present in my throat chakra. And so my voice has, is a little sharper or a little less, you know, it's a little more egoic or, or, uh, it's like it's uh running. Yeah. Right. Right. And that, you know, and that sucks that, I mean, it's, you know, I would prefer to be very present in there all the time. And, and of course, especially sitting here doing a podcast where, Anything I might say is, <laughs> you know, going out to our uh, billions of listeners. <laughs> in space. In space. <laughs> you know, there's a tendency to, for the, the throat to clam up a little bit. And, of course, singers who can go on stage and sing to a crowd and stay very present and open in their throat chakra, it's amazing, you know, and, then, and we all are amazed by it. It's like, wow, you know, it's awesome. And uh, it's part of what I am so, you know, one of the, I think one of the reasons I'm so obsessed with, with singing is it's like, cause I'm, it's a place where I'm, I'm working on that. You know, I want to get, mm. you know, there's a draw, an angst, a longing. I hear someone like Sinatra sing and it's like, oh my God, what does it feel like to be that present in your throat chakra? Can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, so when you kind of bring awareness to your throat chakra. What else? You mentioned kind of the sweaty palms. You mentioned just the the vulnerability of it, which uh, can definitely feel and hear, like even if your voice settles in, that there's, it's a cave, right? There's a, yeah. there's a, a way in which you're seeking shelter in, in that place or are worried about what might come in uh physically what do you feel in your uh face um i mean it can vary right when i was doing that it, it my face felt fine it, it actually felt kind of more relaxed and my my throat muscles felt more relaxed i felt like i was living in them more okay I, yeah, totally. The uh, I think for me, I think I have a similar. Uh, I think I've talked to you just some different issues with my throat, like tightening up and just kind of uh, there's stuff going on there. And to me, like as we were doing it, I was noticing my uh, sinuses more, and just the something something locked up there. I don't know what it is, mm. but the so I just it's. Uh, it's like you said, it's like you can feel the need to to sit there more. 
but it's not uh, tough to find the space for that. And I, I mean, I can just feel it sort of settling out now, but for the last couple of minutes, suddenly I was like, okay, what time is it? Is this almost over? I, you know, I need another cup of coffee. <laughs> you, you know, like my mind was just like, get out of here. Yeah. There's a flight, a flight response. Yeah. If you want to learn more about the dimension approach, please visit dimensionapproach.com. Dimension approach.